Hello! Um, so, really short video tutorial about demography. Um, basically, what I'm going to do is just recap some key points, what you need to know, and possible exam questions, which is the important bit. Um, so, as part of this topic, we've got births, deaths, and migration. Um, put simply, you really need to know what the patterns are. So, births, um, it decreasing, deaths, decreasing, migration increasing, and what the possible reasons are for them, and possible outcomes or consequences or impact on families or society. Okay, now in the demography box on Moodle, there is already a births um, video tutorial and one about deaths video tutorial. So basically this one, I'm going to focus on the migration one. Migration has never ever been asked. Um, it wasn't that long ago that there was an ageism question that had been asked. So I'm going to have a little bit of a chat about migration on this one. Okay, so in terms of migration, um, that is the movement of people. And um, we can then further split it down into immigration, movement into an area, emigration, movement out of an area. And the net migration is the difference between the numbers immigrating and the numbers emigrating. And it's either a net increase or a net decrease, whether the number of people moving in is greater than the number of people moving out and vice versa. Um, now, this is the important bit that you know the recent and future migration patterns so then you should be able to say um, why people moved. Um, so you can refer to push factors such as economic recession, unemployment at home, and pull factors, higher wages or better opportunities abroad. Um, these are economic reasons for migration. Um, conflict, conflict with other reasons such as um, religious or political or racial persecution. So these are all reasons why people did move. But basically, what the impact is that you're starting to see is an ethnically diverse society. Um, by 2011, ethnic minority groups accounted for 14% of the population. Um, and you can link it to another topic by saying that this is influencing um, a greater diversity of family patterns. So, for example, black families are more likely to be lone parents. Um, Asian families more likely to be that larger, larger nuclear, often sometimes extended families, um, and so on. Okay. Um, so you've got to be able to talk about um, the impact of these patterns. You might even want to mention the age structure as well. Um, a direct impact is that immigrants tend to be younger, they tend to be of working age. So that means that this is lowering the dependency um, the dependency ratio. Um, more people are working and less people are dependent. So that's really, really good. But indirectly as well is that because they are younger, they are more likely to be more fertile and have more babies. So on the other hand, um, the younger immigrants have more children, which might increase the ratio. But over time, these young children should actually end up being in part of the workforce, which will lower the ratio once again. And just another point to mention as well, usually when a group has become um, part of the population, um, the closer the fertility rate comes to the national average, um, which will reduce the impact on the dependency ratio there. Okay. Um, Another thing that you need to know is about globalization. Now, globalization is the idea that the barriers between different countries are starting to disappear and we are becoming more interconnected, keyword, between different um, national boundaries. So, for example, with globalization, you've got the movement of people, migration, but you've got the movement of ideas, the movement of money, the movement of goods, services, um, technology. Um, and these are a result of better communication systems, the media, um, and the creation of global markets as well in terms of the economy. Um, and the expansion of the European Union has helped globalisation along a little bit as well. Now, what 
happens with globalisation is that you start to see more rapid social change. And one such change is the increase of global migration, the movement of people across borders. And because we've got this movement of people, you start to see a movement in ideas um, and movement in identity. So you can think about it in terms of a trend. Now, some of the key words that go with um, migration is acceleration. There's been a speeding up according to the UN. Um, international migration has increased by 33% within three, uh, 13 years from 2000 to 2013. Um, and then you've got something called differentiation. There are many different types of migrants. So, for example, students are a major group of migrants. There are more Chinese born postgrads than there are UK born. OK, um, there is something called super diversity. Um, this is Vertovec, calls it super diversity because migrants come from more wider range of countries. And even within a single ethnic group, individuals differ in terms of their legal status. So, for example, you might have a citizen, but their wife or husband, their spouse um, will have a different legal status. And also, one ethnic group might differ by um, culture or religion and be widely dispersed throughout the UK. There's also class differences towards um, within migrants as well. Um, Cohen distinguishes three types of migrants. So you've got your citizens, full citizenship rights, voting rights and so on. There's also Denzians. Now, these are at the other end of the spectrum. You've got privileged foreign nationals. Um, they are welcomed by the state. Um, co governments do like rich people coming into our country. So highly paid employees of multinational companies or billionaire oligarchs, such as Roman Abramovich, the owner of Chelsea, for example, who's from Russia. Um, then you've got at the other end of the spectrum, you've got the helots, which are literally the slaves, and these are the most exploited groups. States and employers regard them as a disposable unit of labour power, a reserve army of labour, Marxist term, and they're found in unskilled, poorly paid work, and include illegal traffic workers, um, and so on. OK, now there's something else that you can link in. So we can link it to feminism here. Um, in the past, most migrants were men, whereas almost half of all global migrants are female now. And there's been a globalisation of the gender division of labour, where female migrants find they are fitting into states patriarchal stereotypes about what women's roles as carers are or as provider of sexual um, services. And um, Host child observed that work, care work, domestic work and sex work in Western countries like the UK and USA are increasingly done by women from poor countries as a result of three social trends. There's an expansion of service occupations in Western countries, which has led to a demand for female labour. Um, Western women have joined the labour force more and they are less willing to or are able to perform domestic labour. So you've got an increase of Western ladies who are choosing not to want to clean their own house and are more likely to employ a working class woman to do so. And Western men are unwilling to perform domestic labour. So is the uh, families equal? You can argue no, because these middle class families are more likely to employ working class women who are might soft, might be migrants um, and the failure of the state to provide adequate childcare. And there's also a global transfer of um, emotional labour as well. So you've got migrant nannies um, providing care and affection for their employers' children whilst often leaving their own children behind in their home country. You could even refer to mail order brides. This often reflects gendered and racialized stereotypes, oriental women as being subservient, um, and women migrants often enter the UK as illegal trafficked sex workers, kept in conditions similar to slavery. You've got different types of identities as well. Um, so, for example, so for example, migrants may take on um, 
a hybrid identity made up of two or, diff two or more different sources, and that was um, Eid, E-A-D-E, found that second generation Bangladeshi Muslims has a hierarchical identity. They saw themselves as Muslim first, then Bengali, then British. And then you've got transnational identity, Ericsson, globalization has created more diverse migration patterns with back and forth movement of people through networks rather than a permanent settlement in another country. So these migrants are less likely to see themselves belonging completely to one culture or another um, and they develop a neither nor identity and loyalty um, and that is all made easier because of um, of, of the movement of people um, and then you've got the politicalization so this is where you can then start to link it into policies um, it, government it's sometimes a hot topic um, migration um, and government policies have seek to control immigration or absorb migrants into society or deal with increased ethnic and cultural diversity. Um, more recently, immigration policies are linked to national security and anti-terrorism. Um, but you've got two types here. You've got the assimilation policies, which is um, Encouraging migrants to adopt the language, values and customs of the host country, so become like us. And then you've got multiculturalism, accepting that migrants might want to retain a separate identity, but um, more likely to um, value diversity. But then you've got the difference between shallow and deep diversity. So, for example, taking on certain foods like chicken tikka, um, that's okay. But in terms of deep diversity, like arranged marriages and wearing a veil, um, um, we don't value that in terms of multiculturalism. Okay. Um, and then basically, this is um, important as well, that you start to get a divided working class. And basically, what that means is that when you've got um, migrant workers coming in, that these working class will start to blame migrants for the loss of jobs rather than really um, blaming the, the 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 owners of the businesses so you could actually you could actually bring in marxist ideas here um um for that so that's a bit of history of uh, migrants world war 2 you've got irish and you've got um jewish 1950s um, so you've got the Caribbean um, and then you've got examples of emigration as well. Okay. Um, now you've got 10 mark questions on this one. Um, so you might want to have a look at practicing some of those. Just a reminder, two PEC paragraphs and then your comment must link to another aspect of the course. Um, so could you link it to childhood topic? Could you link it to... Um, changing family patterns topic, could you link it into the family diversity topic, government policies topic, or even identity and lifestyle, postmodernism. Okay. Um, um, migration is a 20 marker, has never been asked. Um, so there's no items. Um, here's some possible questions that you might want to plan. Um, and basically from the revision session that I did in the past, um, students came up with an item. Um, you could write your own item, think about what is normally in an item and plan an answer. Okay, so let's just have a look at this first one. Um, so apply material from item 2A um, and your knowledge, evaluate the view that migration is a problem for society and I would expect you to be debating this idea is migration a problem but then counter argue it to say that it's a good thing and I would expect to see what's happening what is the patterns of migration is it starting to increase and um, what impact does it have on the dependency ratio impact on population size impact on families impact on identity impact on government policies and then evaluate it by saying well is it a problem or um, is migration a good thing and then you could even bring in you know the feminization of migrants migrants doing work that um, western families don't want to do for example 
okay but basically what I'll do is I will go through this question as a separate podcast um, and you can just listen up to that and I'll talk about this item and so on Um, I'll just do that separately because I'm running out of time okay thank you for listening bye bye